Now it's being called the Game of Thrones and a tussle with the potential to tear one of <laughs> Nigeria's most popular states apart. The disputed throne of Kano, at one point it would have been nearly unthinkable that the seal of the sovereign of this prized emirate would be facing legal jeopardy. So much was its patriarchy set immovably on a rock. But there have been executive orders and legislative acts, lawsuits and counter lawsuits surrounding that exalted even if ceremonial authority. That's what you get when politically driven state governors become the kingmakers, fixing the choice of who sits on that traditional throne to suit their political advantage. And so there's been scandal and fierce battles between former and incumbent governors for supremacy, in the midst of which the kingly ideal has been steadily losing its paramountcy. So enter the courts for damage control, and today what might be a historic verdict, nullifying Sanusi Lamida Sanusi's reinstatement, a verdict which the state government says it's <coughs> appealing against. So is this decision the communal catharsis that's needed to heal the deepening rift in Kano State, or is it the precursor to more battles to come? The court has nullified all steps taken after the order it made. And that those steps we are taking in breach of the court order. And that is all. Subsequently, the court has granted several proceedings. Since matter is before the court of appeal, no court can take any further steps until the court of appeal determines the case at the appeal before it on the issue of jurisdiction. Okay. So, uh, so even the matter was filed to court two, the court two cannot the, the, that court cannot take any further step until the result of the outcome of the court of appeal. Okay. So the matter is now before the court of appeal. It's not, this is not the end of the matter. Okay. The order will find all steps taken subsequent to this uh, portion of this amendment law is been nullified. There are two rulings. One, clearly the judge has stated the proceeding of the case pending the outcome of our appeal that it was pending before the court of appeal. The second ruling is concerning uh, the application made by the claimant, or uh, sorry, the, the, the plaintiff, I can say that he wants this court to declare the law passed, legitimately passed by the State House of Assembly, that is Kano State House of Assembly, that is the second respondent, Nold and Boyd. But this court clearly stated in its ruling that he, can, he doesn't have the wire with the jurisdiction and the power to declare a law that is passed legitimately by the State House of Assembly. But he came to the conclusion and agreed that though the attitude of the first and the first defendants, that is the Colonel State Government and the Attorney General of Colonel State, they are in disobedience of court order that was issued. That was the interim injection that was earlier issued on 23rd day of May 2020. Sounds monstrously confusing, doesn't it? <laughs> Especially for ordinary people like you and me who don't really understand the legalese of all this. Fortunately, I'm joined now in the studio by the respected constitutional lawyer, human rights activist and senior advocate of Nigeria, Femi Falano. What a delight to have you here, especially you, on a day like this. Thank you. Let's start in Kano State. The Federal High Court sitting in Kano, ostensibly nullifying the reinstatement of Muhammad Sanusi II as the 16th Emir of Kano, but the jury still out on what he's actually, what the judge has actually decided. So please put it in very clear perspective for us from a legal point of view. What the court did say, from my understanding, and I've had the advantage of reading the proceedings of the court. What the Honorable Justice Lehman did say is that the order made by him on the 24th of May which, according to him, was served on the first and the fourth defendant, as the governor and, and the attorney general, on the 27th of May, mm. is deemed 
to have been, they are deemed to have had knowledge of the other because of the fact that the other was reported in the social media. Sanusi Lamindo Sanusi was not said to have disobeyed any order. So if the order affects him or affected him, he ought to have been put on notice. But what the court is saying, I cannot declare invalid the repeal law mm. made by the House of Assembly. Right. And that repeal law empowered the governor, empowers the governor to reinstate Sanusi Lamido Sanusi. Right. So is is the other is a bit confusing. Mm, it is confusing. But what is important, which the learned trial judge did not address in his ruling today, is the convenient way by which two solid judgments of the Supreme Court on the limitation of the power of the Federal High Court to interfere hmm. in the affairs of traditional institutions. So it cannot be done via a fundamental right application. And in two cases, Olani and Aru Yehu and Emi of Tuko and Government of Gongola State, the Supreme Court made it clear that to be a chief is not a fundamental right. It's a privilege. And so you cannot go to the Federal High Court to say my right to the stool has been violated, or as in this case, a member of the Emirates went to court mm. to say that, that his human rights had been violated. violated. So there, there are problems. Mm. So because the judge was, um, I read, I, I listened to him. Mm. His lordship was talking of the need to respect the rule of law. In any democracy, in any country that loudly claims to proclaim to rule, to operate under the rule of law, the judgments of the Supreme Court are binding on all authorities and persons. And it's a mockery of the rule of law. If a high court judge decides to ignore or overrule the judgments of the Supreme Court. Hmm. So that is the bottom line of the whole confusion. Right. Is this whether the federal high court has jurisdiction to determine human rights matter arising from mm. the deposition or reinstatement of a tradition. And what's your and, legal and you know, opinion you know, of that? I beg your pardon? What's, what's your assessment of that? No, you know, you know, in the first place, mm. in the first place, we sometimes forget that we're operating a democratic system of God. Ordinarily, we shouldn't be discussing <laughs> Institutions that are not democratic. In the second place, we are operating a federal system of government. However distorted a federalism may be, the Constitution has made it clear that the National Assembly can only enact laws on matters in the exclusive legislative mm. list or concurrent list. Traditional institutions, shifting the matter, are residual. Only the state governments can make laws in respect of those matters. And that is what the House of Assembly did the last time and, <coughs> as it were, undid now. Mm. So it's not the business of the Federal High Court. And part of the confusion to them, for me, is unfortunate. The orders that are housing, you know, out of Kano, Kano State, are rather 
constant embarrassment to the judiciary. And once we already had conflicting order, by the way, yeah. you have the orders of the state high court, Kano yeah. state high court, in favor of... Uh, and that raises... Let me do that, that raises, So once yes. you have that confusion, mm. the practice in the past was to allow the court of appeal to clear, you know, the mm. confusion as it were. And in this case, an appeal has been filed in the Court of Appeal over the ruling of the court that he had jurisdiction on the matter. And from the information at, that, at my disposal, the record has been entered. Once that is shown to the judge, hmm. he should have he just can no longer yeah. make any make any pronouncement. But he still went ahead. <laughs> well, I, I think that will be taken up elsewhere. Yeah. But 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 but, but, but it's not just the judge. Yeah. Our colleagues who also set in motion yeah. the confession mm. that we witness in some of our courts will also have to be called to order. We well, have to well, be called well, to order. I, I appreciate you're bringing some clarity to this, but I mean, you, you mentioned the conflicting orders on this royal tussle emanating from the state high court and the federal high court. Um, is one above the other, or are they the same? No, they are courts of coordinate jurisdiction. Right. So okay. one can, I mean, for instance, <laughs> I, I've spoken to one of the lawyers, and he said, well, we are not bothered by mm. the development of today, because we have, on the side of the government, or in favor of the actions of the government, the orders of the Kano State High Court. It shouldn't be so. Mm. Where you pick and choose which orders of our cost to obey. When you do that, you are calling for a state of anarchy. We, we shouldn't be allowed. Right. And I do hope the authorities will really take these matters very seriously. So in terms of the key points and the key takeaways from today's judgment, the ruling does not favor the deposed Emir Adobayere. No, no, not at all. Not at all. The court so he does, remains basically because the court upheld, I mean, as it were, yeah. I cannot touch. Yeah, I, I cannot pronounce on the validity of the right repeal of, that deposed Adubayero mm. or that empowered the governor to to reappoint Sanusi. Right. So again, as I said. These matters will have to be resolved in the Court of Appeal. Right. So we'll, we'll, and thank you very much for putting it in as clear perspective as you possibly could in the circumstances. We'll wait for that appeal. Let's turn to River State. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm afraid we, we have to milk your presence for as much as possible. Um, judgment expected to be delivered on Friday. You're the legal eagle, and there's some confusion there as well, or lack of clarity on exactly what the appeal court will decide on. Is the court deciding on the legality of the defection of the PDP lawmakers to the APC in River State, or is it giving judgment on the question of the High Court issuing an order restraining those lawmakers from parading themselves as members of the House of Assembly of River State and consequently functioning as such, bearing in mind that their seats had been declared vacant in accordance with the provisions of the Nigerian Constitution. Well, I'd expressed my opinion on this matter, mm. that once you decamp, or cross carpet, using the Nigerian, you know, mm. uh, term, legal, I mean, political term, the Constitution <laughs> is clear on it as to whether you can retain your seat or not. But since this matter has been fixed for judgment, we can comment on Kano because yeah. the court has given its order, uh, the Kano State High Court has given an order. But in this case, the legislators whose seats have been declared vacant, mm. have gone to the Court of Appeal for legal redress. Mm. And arguments have been taken from both sides. Uh, it will be contemptuous, of course, 
it will be contemptuous on my part or preempting the court. No, no, but, but I, I understand By that. I, I'm not trying to ask you to. I'm not trying to ask you to. Decide. No, no, I'm not I'm trying to ask you to tell us what the court may decide. I'm saying, what is the court deciding? Because the, the, there is there is some confusion about what it is actually mm -hmm. going to. Friday I tomorrow? mean, it, it's deciding. Friday the, tomorrow. Yeah, the interim order. Yes. yes. Isn't it? Because, because I mean, just to be. I mean, absolutely clear, the Court of Appeal is dealing strictly with the interim order, which um, was essentially restraining those lawmakers from parading themselves as members yes, of the House. Yes. That, that's really the bottom yes. line, isn't and it? And they have challenged that on appeal. Right. So that's where we are. Okay. So that is the order that has temporarily right. uh, uh, prevented them from performing legislative duty on the ground that they have become. Right. Now, they've taken that to the Court of Appeal, and we have to wait for Okay, no, no, I, I totally understand that. Well, what about the local, I mean, we're, we're kind of, you know, this is the pot of soup, we're licking around the corners of it. Well, what about the local government issue and the question of tenure? I mean, we know that's not the issue. You see, you see Charles? Let, let me just make this point you know, quickly, sorry to interrupt you there, but we know that's not the issue before the Appeals Court, but is it possible for the court to collaterally determine that issue because if the court grants Mr. Ame Wule and his fellow lawmakers leave to continue to act as lawmakers whilst their case is pending in the High Court, would it mean that all the laws they made and decided, including the extension of local government tenure, which they extended, would then be protected under that you know, court, agree, uh, court uh, 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 decision. Uh, uh, in the first place, yeah. and I'm going to appeal to guys like you and the media generally to challenge the members of the political class, the proclivity to disregard settled positions of our law, mm. decisions of the Supreme Court. There are not less than five judgments of the Supreme Court on Local government in them. Yeah, but it's up to and lawyers you cannot, to no, give them I advice, know, isn't you it? You cannot extend the tenure of local government mm. in the case of Attorney General of Fabia or the states and the federal government. When President Obasanjo attempted to extend or did announce the extension, you know, adding one year mm. to the three year term of the first set of councillors under the current political dispensation. In Ekiti, in Plateau, right? In Katsina, in Oyo State, and the rest of them. Mm. The Supreme Court has made the point. By virtue of Section 7 of the Constitution, which provides that the system of local government shall be by democratically elected government. Mm. And, and that's you the... must You must ensure that proper elections are conducted. Well, that's the point I was going to... Unfortunately, in That's the now, point in I was going to come rivers, to. We'll come to that. Yeah. In the case of Rivers, mm. there is already a judgment that the law, the amendment of the law, mm. that allowed extension is illegal and unconstitutional. That is settled. It's no appeal on that yet. Or there's no... The Court of Appeal has not set aside that judgment. So there's no collateral. There's no relationship right. but, but, but let me ask between you, that you, and right. the judgment. But, that but you mentioned deliver. democratically elected of course. people. Yes. In both the case of the local government tenure and the declaration of the seats of the House of Assembly lawmakers vacant, there is the pending issue of elections, which should have been held to fill those vacancies. Where does that fit in as we try to establish where legalities begin and end? Because yeah. well, elections are, as you said, are a fundamental and necessary action yeah. that's needed to complete yeah. the legal you circle, know, again, isn't it? Again, this is the point I'm making right. about the, the conduct and the attitude of the members of the political the 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 the, the, the total disregard for decisions of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. In the case of Ibe Gude and the Labour Party, the Supreme Court has pronounced mm. on you know cross carpeting in the country. And that is the law today. 
again, as I said, mm -hmm. with respect to appointment of caretaker committees and sole administrator, whatever, to run local government, the Supreme Court has said, you know, such practices are alien, unknown to the Constitution. Right. I, I, I suspect that is why the River State government, while announcing the dissolution of the local governments whose uh, officials, whose tenure had expired, also announced they were going to conduct elections as soon as possible. Right. In the case of the uh, filling vacancies of the legislators, again, there are cases in court. Before INE can conduct those or by elections, you know, if possible, the, those cases will have to right. be said. But but so but your, your sense is that the caretaker committees that were appointed by government Fubara to take over, I mean the heads of administration who were asked to sort of take over, that their appointment is also illegal. No, no, you can ask. Uh, I mean, if if there is vacancy, if there are vacancies, right? Because the tenure of elected official has expired. Has expired. Right. Of course, you can ask the head of each of the councils right. to hold for why arrangements are being made to conduct elections. Right. So, so that's not illegal? No, no, because you cannot leave the uh, right. councils without being managed. But those are not, ordinarily, the election should have been conducted. Mm. Just like you're having a, a governorship election or election to the yes. Houses of Assembly, elections are held by INEC before the inauguration, you know, or before the expiration of the time of office of those who are mm. in power. But in this case, there are problems. Right. The government was fighting the extension of the tenure of the local uh, government officials, those who stammer and expire, said they were not going to leave office. So you have a lot of confusion. Yeah. Again, all based on impunity. Yeah. So at the end of the day, the courts will have to decide. Yeah. But, but strictly from a legal point of view, I mean, uh, if you were advising the, the local government chairman who's tenure, I mean, as far as your advice is concerned, the term of those local no, government chairmen has expired, for, and it's, therefore it, the legal thing for them to do to is to leave a, their posts. Yeah, they have left. They have uh, to and if they have the any election. further quarrel, they can seek legal redress. No, you can't. What do you want to? What kind of? What the law says? Right. That she has spent three years, and the three years have expired. Mm. So what you should do is to get ready to contest the uh, next round of elections. Right. Yeah. That, that would be the best advice. What basically. about the fact that decisions are being essentially made by a three-man House of Assembly? Is that legal, especially considering again, that 27 of their fellow again, lawmakers decided of their own volition yeah. to defect and therefore vacate their seats? Again, that is a matter to be decided by the Court of Appeal. Because what they are saying, they are quarreling or they are challenging those who declare their seats vacant. So the Court of Appeal will have to decide. Yeah, but, but you, can you, you can have an opinion. Just no, like I you, cannot express. No, no, but you, you interpreted, I, I, no, you interpreted the issue of the local government. You, you told us the law. What yeah, is the law as far as this is concerned? There is no case in court on the validity right. of the tenure of those you know, uh, uh, yeah, but can, they, can but three me, people no, no, sit I, I am as saying, the House of I am Assembly? saying that is a matter before the Court of Appeal. Right. Because, I mean, these guys are saying our seats were declared illegal by those who believe, I mean, by speakers, two speakers who, who believe. No, no, but, but they, no. they of their own volition left. Oh, Nobody but, put a gun no, to their no, heads. I agree with you. Yeah. But again, as I made clear to you, after the judgment, mm. we can have a discussion. But for me, <laughs> okay, I understand. I that. cannot. I cannot. Yeah, yeah. I, I completely respect that. Yeah. At my level, you yeah, know. Yeah. yeah. I, I respect that. Yeah. What about the disturbances we saw at the local government secretariats, led by youths and militants in yeah. River State, you know, and the know. fact that there was there was shooting, there was an attempt to occupy, and indeed well, the occupation. Two people were said to have been killed, including yeah. a policeman. Uh, you know, absolutely. You know, in the, 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 let me just ask that question, because that, that's an important point. Of course. The, the APC in River State declared that the state was at war and well, called for a state of, of emergency to be declared. Yeah. Is there any legal basis for no, that, no, based no, on you what see, you've seen? Number one, right. Mm -hmm. and this is the painful aspect of it, before 
the violence. There were guys in the social media, you know, who were threatening to cause mayhem. Mm. And nobody was arrested. Now, violence did occur. From the information at my disposal, some arrests were made. Right? So those guys have to be prosecuted. In the interest of law and order in the state, with respect to the call of uh, one of the parties for a state of emergency yes. that there is a war. I mean, it's for Nigerians to decide whether there is a war in river. Even in, in states yeah. where you have serious cases of uh, terrorist attacks, nobody has suggested that a state of emergency be declared to remove the governor for the appointment of administrator and by the way under the constitution right from section 1 to 20 i mean sections 1 to 320 there's no provision for the appointment of a sole administrator what the president is required to do if a state of emergency is declared under section 305 of the constitution is to adopt extraordinary measures to restore law and order right there are provisions in the constitution for removing a governor yeah against so that's not really the, the issue it is, is either by resignation yeah. death or impeachment yeah so a president in abuja cannot suspend or remove a governor. Yeah. It's like the National Assembly one day passing a resolution that the president has been removed. There's no such provision. Yeah. I mean, we are just saying now that the Supreme Court has said, right, that no governor has the power to remove elected local government officials before the end of their tenure. Yeah. In fact, in one of the cases, I think it's the case of Olubumi and the government of equity say we are the Supreme Court. I think the late justice was it gave the leading judgment. That judgment described the conduct of the governor of the state. I think Governor Fire mm. in removing elected officials whose time had not expired. The Supreme Court described the conduct as a executive lawlessness. So if a governor cannot remove a local government chairman or a councillor, where has the president got the power to remove a governor? It happened on well, the I don't president. think he was asking no, for it. It happened on they the law and no, order. That's, that's yeah. Yeah. No, that's but I see what you mean. I mean, that's a, that's no, a very people make the mis it happened, illuminating it point. It happened on yeah. the president of Bassanjo illegally. It could, they couldn't justify it under the law. Mm. And that was why I think President Jonathan was properly advised when a state of emergency was declared in the three states mm. in the northeast. And the president was advised, you know, you have no power to remove a governor. And the president never removed the governors in those states, even though extraordinary measures were put in place to restore law. And that is the position of the law. Absolutely fascinating. I mean, I have to say that um, having the benefit of your legal assessment mm -hmm. is like winning a million dollars. OK, well, that's an exaggeration. I mean, I, I could use a million dollars. <laughs> about now but since we've got you here and we've got just a little bit more time just a little bit more mm -hmm. let's talk about the issue of minimum wage mm -hmm. and the again that because we, we, we're seeing different tussles <laughs> the tussle between the federal government and the unions your opinion on that the unions the the federal government has said this is what we can afford the unions are saying no nope, this is what we want. Well, again, it's about the rule of law. Mm. Section 3 of the National Min Minimum Wage Act of 2019 prescribes that the minimum wage fixed in 2019, 30,000, shall expire after five years. I did draw the attention of the government to this provision before the expiration of the minimum wage. But the government didn't take that seriously. In any case, under the provision of the law, there shall be 
tripartite committee drawn from the government, I'm talking of federal and state government, mm. private sector, and the trade unions. So that body was set up. So from the, from the again, what has been uh, suggested, I mean, that body has made a recommendation to the president. So a bill will be expected to be sent to the National Assembly. Uh, the state governments are saying, we cannot pay. If some of them are saying, oh, we want to pay, what we can afford? Again, that is not in consonance with the Constitution. Because trade dispute, trade union matters, labor matters, minimum wage, are in the exclusive legislative list. Only the National Assembly can, as, uh, under the current political dispensation, only the National Assembly can enact a law on minimum wage. So if you amend the constitution tomorrow to allow state government to pay what they like, but there is no modern state, there is no modern democratic state, including federations, where governors and private employers are allowed to fix the minimum way. That's why it's called the minimum way. Mm. That is the basic that nobody can go under, but you can increase it. And there are decisions of the National Industrial Court on this matter that you cannot pay below what is said to be the minimum. Right. I think I also read, I think former Governor Fashola was saying, well, we're uh, making a mistake, we're confusing wages and salaries, as far as the law is concerned. Under the Labor Act, I think Section 90, wages are salaries. A monument under, I think, section 23 of the National uh, uh, Salaries, Income, and Wages Commission. Salaries are wages. But what the National Assembly is asked to do is to prescribe the minimum. Right. But the mistake governors are making when they say we're unable to pay is if you increase the minimum to a certain level, say 100% or 200%, no losses. You must also increase the salaries of a director or a permanent secretary by 200%. Yeah. So as you move up, you right. so try you to rebalance the things. Yeah, the yeah. whole idea is to okay. challenge income disparity. Right. Yeah. That's all. That's, so, that's, that's a critical Yeah, point we're supposed to show up, yeah, you know, yeah. from below. Absolutely. But not that you expand yeah. the disparity the more. Yeah, and that's the law. That's mm. fascinating. Mr. Falano, I want to thank you very much. Indeed. Thank you very it's much. It's been brilliant having yeah. you here. Femi Falano is a respected Chess, constitutional If you want lawyer. to increase salaries in the country, mm. that is the duty of the National Salaries Income and Wages yeah. Commission. But for minimum wage, the National Assembly by an act law. I think we, we, we've got that point. Thank you very much indeed. And uh, Femi Falano is a respected constitutional lawyer, human rights activist, and senior advocate of Nigeria. What a brilliant pleasure to have Thank you, you here. Thank you very much. Thank you very yes. much indeed. Thank you.